For our last factoring video, we're going to look at factoring trinomials where a is greater than 1. So in the past, we've done a equals 1, and then we've done GCF, difference of squares, and grouping. So now we're going to look at a is greater than 1. So if we think back to trinomials where a is 1, right? That a is that initial one out here, right in front of the x squared. So whenever that's 1, all we have to do is find numbers that multiply to c and add to b multiply to c and add to b. So in this case, I've got a negative 1 and negative 1 will give me negative 2. So all I have to do is two parentheses, both of them have an x, and put a negative 1 and a negative 1. All right? Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. But the problem is, is if I have an a that's other than 1, right? So if I had something like um, 2x squared plus x minus 3, I don't even know if that's factorable. But if I have this 2x squared, and I were to find numbers that multiply to negative 3 and add it to a 1, all right, normally I'd put my x in my x, but if I multiply these back out, that's going to give me x squared, not 2x squared. All right, if I were to go backwards and use a FOIL method to multiply back, it would not be the same thing. So now I've got to think, okay, I've got a 2x and an x, because that's going to give me the 2x squared that I need, but then i got to figure out what numbers are going to multiply to this c value, but then also whenever I do 2x times that number and add the x times that number, I've got to somehow get x in the middle. Okay, and it's a little harder. It's more of a guess and check, right? So you can't, you can't just put the x in there. It's got to be whatever these are. Well, then if you had something that was like 6x squared, right, it could be 6x and x, or you could have a 3x and a 2x, because both of those multiply will get us back to 6x squared. So it becomes a big pain in the butt to sit there and guess and check depending on the numbers that you have. So we're going to look at two ways of doing this, two tricks, two cheats, so to speak. All right, I just want you to pick one and stick with it. Okay, I don't care which of these you use, just pick one and stick with it. Go ahead and write down everything from the video so that you can always refer back to it, both methods. But I just want you to get really good at one way. All right, so the... First one, call it bottoms up. This kind of goes along with FOIL. It's kind of similar to FOIL, so typically if you prefer FOIL, you might like this method the best. But all I'm going to do right now, I can't factor it like we've been doing because of this 2. So I'm just going to temporarily move it. I'm going to move it to become part of my C by multiplying. So then I'm just going to rewrite x squared plus 3x plus 2. Now I've got this coefficient of 1, a equals 1, so I can factor like we've been factoring. I want to find two numbers that multiply to 2, but add to 3. All right, so I want to multiply to 2, add to 3. Well, factors of 2 are 1 and 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. So now I'm going to have x plus 1, x plus 2. All right, this is what we've been doing the whole time. But if I multiply this back out, I'm going to get to the second line, not back to my first equation. Right? So I've got to somehow take this 2 that I moved and bring it back out. I'm going to do that by dividing. Do the opposite. Multiply to move it there, and now I'm going to divide it back out. So I'm going to divide both of my terms, both of my factors, by 2. I can't simplify 1 over 2, so we'll leave that there for a second. But I can't simplify 2 over 2 to get 1. Now, factored form can't have any fractions, so this is where the bottoms up comes in. I'm going to take whatever's on the bottom and move it up to the front. So this parenthesis would be 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. And that's all I have to do. If I multiply this back out, I get back where I started. So your steps for bottoms up. First, you multiply, multiply a times c. Okay, then you're going to factor like normal. All right, but then we got to pull that a back out, so we're going to divide our factors by a, whatever your original a was, and then you're going to do bottoms up. Okay, you have to have one of these be a fraction. You can have both of them, but at least one has to be a fraction because you've got to have a coefficient out front of one of your x's. If not, you would multiply back out to an x squared. So one of them will always have to have a bottoms up done. The other way, reverse box. Okay, now remember, whenever we multiplied, and you would put 
you know, your 2 by 2, and you put like x and a 2, x and a negative 1, and then you just multiply. So we have x squared, 2x, negative x, negative 2. Combine your like terms. First term comes down. This one would be uh, positive x and then minus 2. Right? That's what we would do if we were multiplying using the box method. So your first term is always in the first box. Your last term is always in the second box. And then your two diagonals combine to get the middle term. All right, we're going to use that to do reverse box. So I'm going to make a 2 by 2 box. When we're factoring, we're looking for what goes across the top and what goes down the side. So I'm going to use what I have to get there. So I know my first term has to go in the first box. So 2x squared. And my last term goes in the bottom right. So that's a positive 1. These two terms have to add to get this 3. All right, well, something else we're going to use is that they have to multiply to get whatever a times c is. All right, so I'm going to multiply a and c, which is 2 in this case. So these two terms have to multiply to a positive 2, but add to a 3. Well, we just found those in the last example with bottoms up. It's 1 and 2. So I'm going to put a 1x and a 2x in my two boxes. Because remember, if I add them together, they have to give me a 3x. All right, your first box is always going to have x squared, your bottom one's going to be a constant, these two are always going to have an x in them. Now to find what goes on the top and the bottom, I'm just going to find the GCF. I'm going to work from this bottom corner out. So my GCF of 2x and 1 is just 1, nothing goes into both of those. 2x squared and 1x is x. 2x squared and 2x is 2x. And 1x and 1 is 1. And now these are my factors that would normally be row at the top and the side. So I'm going to have x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. All right, so you fill in what you know, your first and last term. Then you find two terms that multiply to get whatever a times c is and add to get that middle term. And then you find the GCF, work from that bottom corner out. All right, so now we're going to do example two, bottoms up. First thing I do is I multiply a and c. So I've got x squared plus 7x minus, what is that, 120. All right, I want to find two numbers that multiply to get a negative 120, but add to get 7. So I've got add to get 7, multiply to get a negative 120. All right, so we got 1, 120. 2 and 60, 3 and 40, 4, 30, 5 and, what is that, 24, 6 and 20, 7 does not go into it, 8 and 15, now remember I'm looking for some that are 7 apart, well I know that 8 and 15 are 7 apart, but they have to multiply to get a negative 120, so one of these has to be negative, it's got to be the 8, and that will give me a positive 7. So I come back over here, I have x minus 8, x plus 15, but now i got to pull that a back out, so I'm going to divide both of these by my original a of 20. 8 over 20 doesn't work out evenly, but it does simplify to, what is that, 2 over 5. And 15 over 20 simplifies to 3 over 4. Can't have any fractions, so now is where I do bottoms up. Take the bottom and put it up at the front. So you have 5x minus 2, 4x plus 3. Much easier than guessing and checking, or at least much quicker than guessing and checking. Now we're going to do uh, that same one by bottoms or reverse box. Didn't make a new slide for it. But we're going to do reverse box over here. Go ahead and write both down, even if you already prefer bottoms up. All right, so in my box, I know that my first term is the 20x squared, and my last term is a negative 6. These two terms, I'm going to combine, combine like terms, and they're going to add to get my negative 7, and then they're going to multiply to get whatever 20 times negative 6 is, which is negative 120. 
right? And we just found it with uh, bottoms up that negative 8 and 15 add to 7 but multiply to negative 120. So I'm going to put a negative 8x and a 15x in my boxes, right? I'm going to find the GCF from this bottom corner out. So the GCF with 15x and negative 6 is just a 3. 20x squared and negative 8x would be a 4x. 20x squared and 15x, 5x. And negative 8x and negative 6 would be a 2, but remember you always keep whatever's first, the sign. So it would be a negative 2. And then I just rewrite 5x minus 2, and we're done. All right, solving by factoring. Same thing that we did before, but now you might have an extra step. So remember when we found this one, 2x squared plus 3x plus 1, to be 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. All right, so now to solve, I just set both of them equal to 0. I subtract 1 from both sides, so 2x equals negative 1. Divide by 2, x equals negative 1 half. Subtract 1 from both sides, x equals negative 1. So my answer for this one is negative 1 and negative 1 half. Oops, that should be a squiggly. All right, for this one, we found that it was 5x minus 2 times 4x plus 3. Same thing, just set both of our factors equal to 0, add 2, so you get 5x equals 2, divide by 5, x equals 2 fifths. Subtract 3 from both sides, 4x equals negative 3, divide by 4, x equals negative 3 fourths. So in my solution set, this one would be negative 3 fourths and 2 fifths. So same thing as solving, but now instead of just like a simple add or subtract 1, you might have to add or subtract and then divide.